Yesterday in an email, I promised that I would get out an explanation of where we're at in the new customer brochure. It's really more of a, of a booklet that is meant to take your customers through um, why it makes sense not only to complete a proper remediation um, if they have a mold problem, but also why moisture control steps uh, are necessary so that they don't have a problem again. I'm going to take you through what we're doing with this brochure and then where we're going from here in terms of marketing support. So this is the cover that you're looking at uh, of the new brochure. As you can tell down the table, I'm going to uh, tour you through this and some of the edits that we're making and things. Um, but I want to take you one step at a time so you understand where we're coming from and how this can help you as a marketing and sales tool and what other tools are going to be available to you over the next eight weeks. Okay, so this is the, the, uh, the, the brochure cover itself. Um, you can tell, you can see here, uh, we're going to focus on attics, basements, and crawl spaces or um, the ABCs, if you will, of mold and moisture control. Um, and this would, will be, uh, should be available within about two weeks, okay? So obviously, um, we are catering toward homeowners, families, things of that nature in here. Now, um, with this brochure, um, after we get out the first, uh, the first run, we're also going to uh, allow for co-branding on this brochure. So where you see things that are kind of a lot of white space, we've got plenty of space for your information to go. Um, by the way, the, the, the reason that we're doing this is with the, the mold and moisture control class being so popular and so many people wanting to begin offering this service, making a connection between the very technical information of S520, right? S520 and the five principles of mold remediation and then making it really sing and making it understandable to homeowners can be a challenge, as I spoke to yesterday in that email. So that's what this brochure is meant to, to do, is really be able to be used as a pre-mailer, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one thing that we want to establish right up front is that within our industry, there are standards, right? And, and we're not basing this on anything theoretical. This is stuff that really works. And uh, so we're going to take the customers through, it says there, a five-step process. Actually, we're going to take them through a six-step process, and here's why. If you look at where we get started, it's in site preparation, right? And that just means doing all the things necessary, um, whether it be setting up containment initially or whether it be making sure things like toys or fuel or electricity and water plumbing to the area is turned off or whatever, that we have created a safe work environment. Well, here's the thing. We not only have site preparation to do, but we have inspection and preliminary determination to do, right? So one of the things in adding value to a customer is to share with them what the inspection process looks like. And again, my thinking always goes back to the S520. So we're going to walk them through in this very quickly what it looks like as far as information gathering, building inspection, uh, developing a preliminary determination, and then developing a work plan, and then that will flow right into site preparation. I'm sure that makes sense to you. The other thing that we run into a lot, especially, well, in, in all these areas, attics, basements, and crawl spaces, is why does the insulation need to be removed? And we're going to really make this simple for the customer to understand. A, a fiberglass insulation is like a giant sponge where it traps mold and, and, it, and it traps moisture, um, trapping mold, I mean like, like a filter, and uh, as a sponge that would be absorbing moisture. So um, we want to dispel the need to reuse uh, insulation right there. The other thing that you'll see is that there's a lot of companies who recommend these closed systems, right, where you're sealing it up real tight, and they're using the statistic of 25 to 50 percent of the air that you breathe is coming from the unconditioned areas of the house. Well, if that's true, then we certainly want to be bringing fresh air into that space and not recycling dehumidified air. And because of the Atmox system, which we're going to get to in just a little bit, we have the ability to do that. But first, what we want to establish is good protocol in the remediation process once we've hit some of this information, right? Now, you probably saw that I um, put out 
Yeah, let's see how we can get this in here. Um, put out a sheet the other day and a graphic that looked a lot like this. Well, as I was thinking about the next step, which would be the structural cleaning and remediation step, where you can clearly see here we're talking about the difference between companies who just um, uh, deal with soil load with like disinfectants and things of that nature and it's only getting the top part here um, versus diving into those surfaces and cleaning out all of that contamination from the surfaces with Oxypar. Um, yeah, we want to get into that, but probably not before we step back and really take a look at what the overall process needs to be in terms of remediation from a dilution standpoint. So going from the containment of the space to using air scrubbers and negative air when necessary, and then to HEPA uh, vacuuming, and then over to the source removal process where we're dealing with Oxypar, right? And then finally, our moisture controls. Now the customer can see what this process should look like and why it's going to make sense after this stuff is taken care of, why moving to moisture controls makes sense. After all, let's go back to the principles of mold remediation and everybody always does a great job at providing for safety and health, documenting work conditions, contamination control, contamination removal, but somehow when we get to contamination prevention, number one, moisture control, we, uh, we lose on that step a lot of times and it, and it uh, goes to show how many sales maybe are being lost as a result of not uh, finishing uh, the five steps of remediation. Moisture control is a major step. So now when we go back here, we can look at what those things are right to uh, control moisture ongoing. Now, um, one of the other things that we're going to do in here, um, aside from, uh, of course, always pointing to S520 standards for mold remediation, is here. I have a great new picture um, showing how vigorously Oxypar foams on contact to identify and pull contaminants out. So instead of that picture right there, which is just kind of a dingy crawl space, I'm going to show a picture from last week when I was doing an on-site um, uh, training with a company up in Maryland, uh, exactly how the product works. And then probably right below it, we'll show a before and after of exactly uh, what results you'll get with Oxypar. So it'll kind of complete that step of the process. The next thing that we're going to do is move into controlled ventilation. Now, of course, we want people to have an easy understanding of how controlled ventilation works. When the uh, system remains closed um, due to higher dew points outside than inside, and when it's open to bring in that fresh, dry air that we were talking about before. So we've got a lot of graphics to this. In fact, we have them also on this other sheet, and I'm gonna find a way today to work these back in so that we can talk about how that works in basements, how that works in attics, and then of course, how that works in crawl spaces. So um, that's just a little bit of reshuffling that I need to do. And then once we've got that done, what we wanna do is um, lead that customer right into uh, how we use engineering thresholds with the coatings, okay? Over here, the mold resistant coatings um, to prevent future problems because when the Atmox system is closed, sometimes you're going to have times where uh, where moisture and may begin to tick up. In that case, we've got waterproof coatings that um, do all of these things, right? They are water resistant, breathable, you won't have dry rot, wet rot, a barrier against what should be soil load, um, and then you, of course that's treated with clear guard to sh show exactly how that uh, works. So we're going to be tying, continually tying together moisture controls in terms of um, controlled ventilation and long-term surface protection. And by the way, the, the surface protection is taking the place of the dehumidifier, right? We're controlling this in a passive way at the surface that consumes no energy versus a dehumidifier that um, uh, creates all kinds of issues in addition to large electric bills and things of that nature for the homeowner. So um, we're just going to reiterate these points over and over again so they understand what long-term moisture controls look like. 
Then we're actually going to move this back a little bit. This is controlling moisture release like vapor barriers and those sorts of things. What we want to get across in here that there are times due to especially new construction where we've got to understand um, how much moisture release is tolerable in an area, whether it be 100% um, you know, overlap and seaming and things of that nature that needs to take place because we've got such a tight um, floor system above it or it's so close to the ground or whether we can run that a little bit looser. Okay, this is going to be your call, but we definitely want to take the time to address uh, moisture controls with the, the customer as well. And then we'll roll on here. This will be another place where we can do some co-branding. And then we want to provide the opportunity for long-term surfaces in, in the form of an annually renewable service contract um, where on a, a regular base or on an annual basis you can come out and do a complete diagnostics of the Atmox system. That's a simple thing to do by tooling through their software and making sure everything is working right with your uh, fans, etc. Doing a visual inspection of the space and doing a structural inspection, kind of going back to what we did in the first place just to make sure there are no conducive conditions that are forming. Um, so that's going to be the final page of the brochure. Now, we have all the, the edits made here, okay? So um, I'm going to be sending this over to Stephen today so that we can get everything where it's supposed to be and finish this brochure up um, you know, between this week and next week and go to print on it. Um, in fact, we've got a plethora of notes that go along with this as well, so I'm going to be doing that today. Now, before I say goodbye in this video, I wanted to let you know also that um, with vapor lock, uh, switching over to uh, smoke odor sealing and things of that nature. This test report, this is kind of a synopsis of the test report, is about to come out. I've got a couple little tweaks to do with this. We're actually editing a new benefit sheet um, for this as, as well uh, to go along with it. And then uh, I will finish these up and send these out. This also has to go up to Canada because as you probably saw maybe on our website recently or in some uh, emails, uh, we are now moving forward uh, with distribution into Canada, which we're very excited about. But uh, as you can see here, Vapor Lock is right there every step of the way with Zinzer Bin white and clear. Um, the only, the only uh, odor and stain blocking sealers that compete uh, as a waterborne chemistry with the solvents and shellacs and things of that nature. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to put this out this morning, and we will see you guys on the trails.